So guys, in this video, we're gonna be going through a masterclass in the clinical anatomy of the patellofemoral joint. We've got our brilliant 3D anatomy model to help us, so if you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Welcome back to our 3D anatomy model, which we're gonna use for this tutorial on the patellofemoral joint. So let's get our bearings with the key three components of the knee joint. We have the femur, also known as the thigh bone, the patella, also known as the kneecap, and the tibia, also known as the shin bone. So the main part of the knee is where the femur articulates with the tibia, which is referred to as the tibiofemoral joint. But we also have where the patella articulates with the femur, which is the patellofemoral joint, as we're gonna be diving into today. Now a key note on the patellofemoral joint, and in particular, the femur, because there is a very particular area of the femur that the patella articulates with, and it's this little groove that we can see here, which is called the trochlea. Now the idea with the trochlea is that it creates a little bit of a train track for the patella to run up and down in the patellofemoral joint. And this is crucial anatomy to understand when it comes to patellofemoral pathology. So next, let's talk about the patella in a little bit more detail. Now, the patella is known as a sesamoid bone. And in fact, it's the second largest sesamoid bone in the body. Now, a sesamoid bone is commonly referred to as a floating bone. Medically, it means a bone which is encased within a tendon. And we can see this beautifully with the patella. We can see here how it effectively sits within a complex made up of the quadriceps tendon, and the patella tendon before the patella goes on to insert into the tibial tuberosity of the tibia bone. Now, this is really, really important because it allows the patella to act as a fulcrum or a lever point, so it allows large forces to be generated by the quadriceps tendon in order to extend the knee. Now this highlights our first really important clinical anatomy point. We can see that the patella tendon sits within that quadriceps tendon patella tendon structure. And therefore, the quadriceps muscle has a real role in stabilizing the tracking of the patella within the patellofemoral joint. So what do we see with our patients? Weakness in the quadriceps muscles. And you can imagine that this will have a knock-on effect of the way that the patella tracks within that trochlea. So, Weak quadriceps muscles, a clear risk factor for patellofemoral pain. So next, back to the joint itself. The patellofemoral joint is a plain joint, and like all major joints in the body, it is lined with hyaline cartilage or articular cartilage, which is a shiny, hard protective layer that covers those bones, particularly the ones that are articulating with each other. Here we can see the cartilage which runs over the trochlea of the femur, as we saw earlier, that the patella is naturally going to articulate with. We can see it from a different angle here, and you can see how that layer of cartilage really runs around the whole femur bone at the uh, inferior section, which is the articulating section. And here we can see the retro surface of the patella. And as you can see, it is also covered in hyaline cartilage. But notice how it's actually mainly the upper or superior section of the patella, which is lined with cartilage rather than the inferior section. This is really important when we consider conditions like patella alta, which we'll see a little bit later. Now, when it comes to patellofemoral joint pain or patellofemoral joint pathology, this hyaline cartilage is super important. In fact, the majority of the time when patients have patellofemoral pain is due to an irritation or an inflammation of that cartilage directly. Now, sometimes this could be in the form also of what we call an osteochondral defect. This is where we have effectively a pothole uh, that gets created within the cartilage. That means that when the patella moves against the hyaline cartilage of the trochlea, if there's an osteochondral defect here in the trochlea, you can imagine that it's gonna be uncomfortable whenever the patella rubs against that particular point of the cartilage. So it's super, super important for us to consider within the anatomy. So next, how does the patella fit into the trochlea at different degrees of movement? Well, here we can see a model of the knee at zero degrees extension. And effectively, you can see that the patella actually sits relatively far away from the trochlear groove 
down here. And in fact, at zero degrees at extension, the patella does not engage with the groove. When we flex the knee to around about 20 or so degrees, you can see that the patella starts to engage with that groove. It starts to move into that groove. And as we flex more, in particular towards 60 and then 90 degrees, we can see that the patella is fully incorporated into the trochlea. It's deep within it. Now, this is really important to pathology. We know that when patients have patellofemoral pain, sometimes they actually find extension a little bit easier, perhaps because of the fact that the patella is not sitting in that groove. We find that aggravating factors for patellofemoral pain might include kneeling, squatting, going up and down the stairs, and sitting with the knee in flexion for a long period of time. We call this the cinema sign, sitting with the knee bent with a long period of time in the cinema. And we can see that when it comes to flexion, as we said, that is the position where the patella really engages with that trochlear groove. So it totally makes sense that this is the position that might be aggravating if your patient has patellofemoral pain. Next, let's talk a little about the shape of the trochlea. Now, we want this to be a nice rounded surface that effectively creates a clear groove for the patella to sit in. And if we look here at the anatomy model just from the side, we can see that it does have a nice rounded surface to it for the patella to be able to sit in. And in fact, here is a skyline view or a top-down bird's eye view that we sometimes see on an x-ray to look at the trochlea from this angle. And again, you can see its curved nature for the patella to sit in. Now, of course, there are conditions where the trochlea is not shaped in that nice rounded groove. And we sometimes refer to this as trochlear dysplasia. Now, here we can see an x-ray where there clearly isn't a nice rounded surface to the trochlea. And that flattened shape means that it's more difficult for the groove to actually encase the patella and therefore for the patella to stay in that groove. Therefore, when we see conditions like trochlear dysplasia, of course it can create pain, but it can also create instability where that patella can slide out of that trochlea really easily during movement. By the way, if the patella does dislocate within the trochlea, 99% of the time it dislocates laterally. Now, another key condition to consider here is called patella alta. Patella alta is where the patella effectively sits too superiorly. It sits too high up in relation to the patella femoral joint. Now, as you can see on the screen here, when the patella is in a nice normal position, it's directly in line with that trochlea, meaning that when the patella moves, it's firmly within that groove and keeps it stable. However, we can imagine that if the patella was sitting more high, imagine the patella was sitting around here, there's actually no trochlea here. There's nothing for it to be able to sit in. And therefore, patella alta can easily create instability because there isn't that nice groove for the patella to sit in. So that's patella alta. And if you want more on patella alta, we've got a great video on it on our YouTube channel. You can find it at the end of this video. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. Now, if you want more on patellofemoral joint dysfunction, we have an amazing course for you called Patellofemoral Pain. It's run by two brilliant expert researchers in this field, Dr. Bradley Neal and Dr. Simon Lack. You can find this course in the description below. And we've also got other brilliant videos on our YouTube channel, such as Patella Femoral Pain and Patella Alta, which you can find here at the top of the screen. Once again, I'm Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.